Hello and welcome to the presentation on specific heat capacity and latent heat practice questions. The aim of this video is to practice using the specific heat capacity and latent heat formulas uh, in some tricky tricky problems. Okay, pause the video and attempt both questions. Okay, so example one. How much energy is needed to change the state of 750 grams of ice at 0 degrees Celsius to water at 0 degrees Celsius? Reasonably simple. Just use this formula, rearrange it, multiply both sides by mass, cancel out the mass on this side, we have energy is equal to specific latent heat times mass, substitute the numbers in, because this is 340 joules per gram, and this is in grams, we don't need to change any of the, uh, change any of the units, uh, we get a number here, which I can put as kilojoules instead of joules there, um, 255 kilojoules. Right, example 2, very similar to example 1, apart from this time, it's we're removing heat energy. This is just to point out to you that you can specific latent heat of fusion works just as well for freezing as it is for melting, as it does for melting. Okay, so this time we have 1.5 kilograms of water at zero degrees Celsius, and we want to change the state to ice, so we have to remove heat energy. Once again, we use the same formula. Uh, this is just that rearrangement. Um, energy is equal to mass times specific latent heat. So it doesn't matter which way around multiplication goes. Okay, and uh, specific latent heat is 340, and the mass, well, this is in grams, this is in kilograms, so I shall change this to grams. So 340 times 1,500 gives me 5100040 zeros, or 510 kilojoules. Okay, good. Pause the video and read this question. It's a little bit trickier, this one, so uh, don't feel bad if you can't quite work it all out, but I'm sure you will be able to get some other way at least. Okay, so this time we've got a two-part question. It says, how much energy is needed to raise the temperature of 3 kilograms of ice from minus 10 to water at 30 degrees Celsius? What we need to do in this first part, you won't get marks for doing this, but you need to recognize that this is about changes of state and changes of temperature. So we're going to have to use both equations we've just uh, looked at in the last few videos. Okay, we can break it down into three parts. Okay, so this part, part one, here is a change of temperature for ice. So uh, the ice changes temperature by 10 degrees Celsius to get up to zero degrees Celsius. Part two is a change of state, this red part, um, and we have to change the state of the ice. Part three, again, was a change of state. Uh, sorry, change of temperature for water. So we've gone specific heat capacity, specific latent heat, specific heat capacity. Right. Let's look at part one. Part one, use um, specific heat capacity equ uh, equation. Um, so the energy for part one is equal to change in temperature, which is 10 degrees, times by the mass, now because again I, it's 3 kilograms, 3,000 grams, times by specific heat capacity of ice, which is 2 joules per gram per degree Celsius. Okay, gives me an answer, 60,000. Right, so that's the energy required to get from this part of the graph to this part of the graph, the yellow part. Okay, part 2, the change of state part. We're using the change of state formula and uh, the numbers. So, uh, specific latent heat of fusion of ice, so to change state from solid, from a solid to a liquid or liquid to a solid, takes 340 joules per gram. 340 times 3,000 grams or 3 kilograms gives us this answer for energy for part two. Part three is back to um, changing temperature. Energy is equal to temperature change times mass times specific capacity. Okay, this time. Um, don't be, uh, don't make the mistake of using the wrong specific heat capacity. Okay, so this time the cha temperature change was from zero degrees from here, zero degrees to thirty degrees there, thirty degrees times by the mass, still three uh, three kilograms or three thousand grams times by four point two joules per gram per degree Celsius, which is the specific heat capacity of water, gives us this new number. Right, part A was asking how much energy is needed in total. So the total energy is E1 plus E2 plus E3. Okay, that looks like an F, it's meant to be an E. Um, E1, E2, E3. Okay, sum them up, and you get the answer for part A, 1,458 kilojoules. Okay, so 
not too complicated, just a lot of steps, but they're simple steps. Each step is reasonably simple. And it's the key part is understanding that you're going through a change of temperature, then a change of state, then a change of temperature. So we use change of temperature formula, change of state formula, change of temperature formula, and then sum the results. Right, so part B. Okay, so here we've asked how long would it take a hundred watt heater to do to how would it like how long would it take a hundred watt heater to do this? So 100 watts means 100 joules per second. Here we have 1,458 kilojoules. So basically, we take the energy formula, rearrange it for time, energy divided by the power, substitute the numbers in, and we find that it's going to take us uh, 14,580 seconds. Okay, hopefully that was clear. If there are any questions, just post them as comments. Okay. Uh, example 4, pause the video and carefully read this question. Okay, so this time uh, we have a set of keys, 600 grams, and they've got to a temperature of 60 degrees Celsius. They get dropped into ice, a large bucket of ice, which is at 0 degrees Celsius. How much ice turns to water? On the face of it, a little bit confusing, but hopefully you can recognize that the steel is going through a temperature change from 60 degrees Celsius to 0 degrees Celsius. We can calculate how much energy that it once had. <coughs> by the energy change formula. Substitute the numbers in. Right, temperature change was 60 degrees. The mass of the uh, the mass of the steel, uh, 0 0.6 kilograms, 600 grams, 0 0.6 kilograms, because <coughs> the specific heat capacity of steel here is given in kilograms per degree Celsius. Uh, sorry, per kilogram degree Celsius. Um, and specific capacity there, 450. So, okay, so now I get my answer. For the, f well, for the first part, I've broken down this question into two parts for myself. Okay, so now I have the amount of energy that the steel has given to the ice. So I can use the specific latent heat formula to calculate the mass that the ice changed. Okay, rearrange this formula for mass. Cancel out specific latent heat. I've divided both sides by specific latent heat. Mass is equal to energy divided by specific latent heat. So I take this energy, divide it by the specific latent heat of ice to find out how many grams of ice. And the answer I rounded up is 48 grams of ice changed into water. Okay, example five is a IGCC question. Pause the video with eight marks. Pause the video and read this question carefully. Okay. State why it's necessary to wait until the water is dripping to the beaker at a constant rate before taking the readings. Right, to make sure that the funnel is no longer supplying heat or the heating element or anything. You can imagine when you put the ice into this to start with, the uh, funnel and the heating element will probably be at room temperature and they will need to cool down, in other words, give heat to the ice uh, until they get to zero degrees Celsius. Okay, uh, why is it necessary to use finely crushed ice rather than large pieces? Okay, if you use large pieces, the inside could be well below freezing point and then you're going to expend energy in raising it up to zero degrees Celsius. Uh, also, you get better contact between the heater and the ice, so less heat could be lost to the atmosphere. Okay, so it's just about improving the accuracy of the experiment. Okay, part B, the power of the heater and the time unknown. Um, write down all the other readings that need to be obtained to get a value for specific latent heat diffusion of ice. Okay, so we need to know um, the mass of the beaker and the water at the start and at the end. So you can subtract the two and find the mass of ice changed into water. Okay, pause the video and read this part of the question. Okay, again, reasonably simple question. Use the specific latent heat um, formula. Uh, we're working with power and time, so we need to use power times time to, to have energy. Okay, 40 watts times 2 minutes times 60 seconds to get the number of total seconds. Okay, and uh, we subtract the mass of the ice that melted and the mass of the ice that melted in a further 2 minutes so that we get more accurate reading for the mass. Okay, and I've rounded down. 338 joules per gram. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you found this useful.